Are you ready for a sweet little game with a bit of a sting in its tail? If not, buzz off. If you are, feel free to settle down and treat you like a queen as we play Waggle Dance. This game is a lovely little game designed by Mike Nudd. I first saw this when I was at UK Games Expo with my game Top Hats and Treachery way back in like 2016-17. Um, and this is an absolutely fantastic, unique little game all about worker bee placement. <laughs> now, my dad is basically a beekeeper and he um, we basically bought this game to play with him and we've had a couple of games together and it's really good fun. Um, it is a unique take on it uh, because you're basically running a beehive. Um, so all your basically workers are worker bees and ultimately you are trying to produce the most honey and win the game. Charming, really. Um, so the best way to look at this is to really kind of dive in. So this is what the board looks like. It's kind of a sequential system of actions that you will resolve one at a time as you go through to the end of the round and then reset for the next round. What you're trying to do is you have your hive. Now your hive consists of a certain number of spaces in front of you. Depending on how many players start, you're basically starting with a different amount and you're trying to produce a different amount of honey. For example, if you start with three hive spaces, you might need to win when you convert three hive spaces to honey spaces. Now, how do you do this? Well, step by step is the answer. Um, what you do is you have a certain number of worker bees that you can place out. And let me pause for a moment to show you some of the most absolutely lovely dice you have ever seen in your life. They are bees. The number ones are bees. And all the different little symbols are hexes as in a beehive. It's absolutely fantastic. They are so cute to play with. They sound lovely and you get loads of them to play with. Uh, this is an absolute brilliant game if you love playing with loads of dice. So once you have your bees, you can then choose to place them out and resolve them in order. For example, if I want some more hive spaces, I would put a bee on there. Uh, you start off by obviously rolling your dice at the beginning of the turn. Uh, so I've got a one, a two, a four, a six, and a five. So I'm gonna put my one, for example, there, and I'm gonna end up getting another piece of hive. Um, I am going to want another egg space. Eggs are really useful because eggs hatch into new dice. In other words, new bees. So I might basically put a two um, on there. And obviously you've got to basically wait because one person's playing at a time. Uh, the dice numbers are important. For example, uh, you can't place, for example, a one on a space where someone else has already placed a one. Can't do it. So there's a certain amount of limited interaction here. Also, doubles are very important in this game but we'll get to that in a little bit. So for example, um, I've got another one, I could put it out um, there. I'm gonna get two new eggs this turn. With my five and my six, I might choose to basically gather some pollen. Now, um, my dice are all out, and then we'll go around and resolve this. Obviously, the other players are going to putting their dice out. Oh, so look, look, lovely dice. Um, and then we'll basically see what happens. So let me just try and put out a few things just to show you. So for example, I've got, uh, let's imagine that orange player is going to basically put a couple this one there, um, put six out, put uh, five out, put another five out, um, and put a card on there. All right, so we go through and we resolve the things in order. Now, um, the blue player basically wants a new high space, they take one and they put it out, obviously high face down, not honey face up. Um, so they basically let it added to their high, done. Okay, now the um, orange player in their hive have basically got an opportunity to get a new dice. If they do this, they need to basically first have an egg space on their hive, then they need to basically have two matching dice placed on that egg. And when we come to this turn, B turn, uh, B turn, we basically resolve it, and these basically hatch into a new dice. So the egg goes, a new die, so the egg goes away, and they basically get another one, and they've now got to take their things back. And more importantly, this hive space is now available for future things as well. So that's how you get more and more and more dice. As you can see, you have a lot of potential dice to get, and it's so much fun getting them. All right, so we've done those, we've done those, we've done those. Um, this basically lets you get new egg spaces. Egg spaces must go out on available hive spaces. You can't take them and hold them in your hand. Sorry, no, which is why 
These are really important to sort out first. You need space. Space will be a bit of a premium in this game. Okay, resolve them in, and now we're on to collecting pollen. There are six types of different flowers in this garden that you can collect from, and then you need to work out who gets which and how much of each one. Well, for example, obviously there's nobody on one, two, three, and four this turn. There's somebody on five, there's somebody on six. Now, whoever's got the majority in a certain area basically can take two pollen spaces, two pollen tokens. So for example, orange has two, blue has one, orange will get two, and blue would get one. Now over here, we basically have them sharing first place, so they would each basically get to take one of the purple and resolve that way. You can share first base, you can't share um, second place. So for example, um, if there are two papers on, on the same map for the first place, they get one each, but if the second place was going to get one cube and there's actually two people sharing, they both get nothing. Oh well. Um, so you will gather pollen, and again, this must be put down immediately on places. Now you can't put pollen on a place that already has an egg, it's one or the other. Why is this important? Well, we'll get to that. Okay, so where we go next is this card. This is basically the swapping around card. What you do with this is it's helping you get the exact right colour of pollen that you want. So say for example you want a bit of a mixture, you want a certain type, this will help you. So you can swap any two colour pollen you like for the one colour that you want, only one of them, or you can swap a spare egg token for one of the pollen that you want. Okay, why is this important? Well this is why. Because to make honey what you need is to basically have a space in your hive which has four matching tokens, matching cubes of the same colour and a double on. Only at that point can you basically turn this into a honey space. So those go back, these go back, and this now becomes honey. Once that is honey, that's basically honey for the rest of the game, done. You can't do anything with that, which means it's effectively a dead space. Dead in a good way, but you can't really use that anymore. So what will you need to do? You'll need to go back here and get some more hive spaces. Now, the way that this basically works is that um, you're kind of continually refreshing and building and doing more as you're going along. What can change that? Well, this last card, the Queen Bee cards, what these basically do is they bend the rules. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail when we go to the table view. Okay, so we're looking in a little bit more detail at Waggle Dance now. So first thing I can show you a little bit more detail is how absolutely beautiful these cards are in terms of the level of detail and quality in them. Even these little teeny tiny bees are actually basically moving the dice around and fulfilling all the different tasks. So for example, you're basically fulfilling some hive spaces. You're basically hatching the uh, eggs out to make new dice. You're collecting eggs, well, laying eggs, I suppose, really. Um, the flowers are essentially the same flower design, but as you can see, the one flower has one bee on, the two has two, the three has three, and so on around you go until this is getting very, very busy on the sixth flower with six different little bees here. Okay. Now, those of you who are very, more sort of like OCD natured will have so much fun making beautiful little patterns with all the little cubes here in the middle and expressing a delight in geometrical accuracy, I'm sure. We tend to fit a little bit, but we basically stop before it gets too, too overriding. Um, this is more detail about when you basically swap the cards around. Okay. And fulfilling. I love this one little here, like basically just carrying and lifting the little blocks into place. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so... This is the idea about how you can put it together. To successfully do it, you need the four different cubes and the two dice. These are kind of like just building on their way, really. Now, the Queen Bee cards, what powers do they have? Well, you need to remember that the game is basically split up into two phases. There's the day phase, when basically the bees are going out and doing their jobs, and the night phase, when you resolve these jobs. So, the day phase is the dice placement, and the night phase is the dice resolution. Now, these Queen Bee cards can affect either the day phase or the night phase. For example, this lets you basically move a dice, want to move a die once it's already been placed to anywhere else along the track. This can be played at any point during the day. So in other words, after everyone's made their moves, you might want to basically change your mind and move it somewhere else. Now, for example, 
This could be used as a strategy if you're trying to block somebody there. Or let's say, for example, you wanted to make sure you put the majority. So you put like two or three or four dice there. And it turns out that you didn't need to put that many dice there. And actually, do you know what? You fancy doing something with those spare dice. So move them around and have an extra effect. OK, what are the day powers have we got? OK, nice and easy. This lets you change any one dice to the dice roll, the die roll that you actually desire. So if you wanted to be a four and you didn't roll a four, well, guess what? Now you can have a four. OK, uh, what else? You basically get to roll an extra die. For some bizarre reason, this extra die doesn't actually have the hex markers. It's just a normal D6. Fair enough. OK. OK, what else? Let's have a look. You can basically put dice of, uh, dice of whatever number you want on a certain space. So it kind of just gives you more options. Again, as usual, most of these cards kind of just slightly tweak and slightly change the rules. You might basically be able to collect an extra amount of pollen on your turn. You could basically put, for example, three pollen spaces and two matching die to turn into a honey instead of four. Or, for example, you could do two dice, two dice of whichever value you like to turn into a honey. Or, for example, two dice of whatever you like to turn into an extra dice. So the idea is that basically it slightly tweaks the rules. Most of these cards are fairly self-explanatory. Some of them are add a little element of play versus play, but most of them let you build your own game. For example, trading a Queen Bee card for three more Queen Bee cards and choose the best one you want. Um, there are a couple of examples which are a little bit negative, which basically include um, taking out certain people's die. So in other words, um, a little hint here is the white dice are your own dice, the black dice are somebody else's dice. This basically lets you knock off one of their dice. This usually causes upset. Um, so we generally don't play those cards, but that's just peculiar to our game. Um, in general, this game isn't really one which lends itself to out and out play versus player action. Competitiveness, yes, absolutely sure. Limited limited space resources, yes, absolutely sure. That feels thematically appropriate. But the kind of like I'm taking one of your dice away now, in our game at least at home, just feels a little bit means so we tend not to play those cards. Um, and we allow someone to redraw if they get one of those. But again, that's just particular to us. In general, the edge of competition works really, really well. You are competing and the idea of the rivalry works nice. Um, you can get a certain amount of negotiation going on here, for example. Like, well, I really, really want pink this turn. Well, are you sure? Well, I kind of do. Well, OK, I'll put two now so if you let me get one. And that kind of works well between the different players. Um, it's kind of a game where being fairly amiable and amicable with each other does pay dividends in terms of you get to achieve more. People who are out and out competitive and out and out mean generally won't profit overly because basically when it turns to them trying to get things later on, people won't sort of like negotiate and discuss and agree with them. So as a friendly game, I think it works much better than as an out and out sort of like vicious competitive game. But that could be just our setting in our family at home. You might want to play super competitive games. If you do and you enjoy it, fine, great, go for it, wonderful. Um, for us, I think this is more of a lighter element of competition rather than a heavier element of competition. Um, game length, uh, it's not too long. For us, it's the last best part of an hour, um, but not huge longer than that. Often we find that if we're having fun, we might basically try to agree to basically play a little bit longer. So instead of having to fulfill five honey, we might basically play until we get to six honey or seven honey, for example. Um, but you can get a good feel of that as you're going along. Um, in general, this is not a game where I'd want to play a little short game. Like if I if this game was finished in 20 minutes, I'd be disappointed. I'd be wanting to play for the better part of an hour um, because it's generally a really fun game once you get your kind of mechanics working. And it's the kind of thing where you're already thinking like one or two turns ahead in terms of where you're building your strategy. So that element lends itself to a nice medium length game. Right. OK, good. I think we just need to say all we said there. Let's follow up to the final thoughts. So what do we think of Waggolands? Well, it is a lovely little game. Um, it gives a bit of a fresh air in terms of the whole worker placement idea. So we basically step away from things like sci-fi, sword and sorcery, zombies, Cthulhu. This is about bees, for goodness sake. Um, and it is definitely an interesting game to play. Uh, if you like worker bee placement games, um, this is definitely one for you in terms of the simplicity, yet also room for strategy. Um, there's kind of a cooperative, quite friendly element, and yet there is decent amounts of competition. So 
in terms of an introductory game, maybe this isn't the easiest in the world, it's definitely not the most complicated, but it's something that you're going to be able to bring on almost everywhere and people will have a good amount of time playing with it because it's more inclusive rather than exclusive. If you don't like a certain genre of fiction, you might be put off a certain game, whereas basically this is about bees. So in terms of anyone who wants to basically sit down at that game, learn a little bit about how worker placement games work, about sequential orderings and things, um, this is a good game to teach, this is a good game to play, whether you find this at a convention, at a club, uh, at somebody's house and basically play for your family, it's a good game. Um, in terms of the components, I love the dice. The dice are absolutely amazing. In terms of having B dice with hex pips, that is a genius idea. And in terms of the sheer amount of dice you get to roll on your turn, also lots of good fun. The other components, decent quality. I mean, in terms of the extra strong mints here, uh, fine. In terms of the cubes, well, they're wooden cubes, fine. Um, the only slight gripe that I've got is basically yellow is yellow, purple is purple, and dark purple is grey for some reason. That's confusing. Other than that, no worries here whatsoever. The cards are cards, the dice are dice, bleh, done. Um, so components-wise, no worries in terms of actual quality. Uh, in terms of strategy, as we said, it's kind of a middle range, really. You want to be thinking a few turns ahead. That works quite well. Um, it basically, you don't want to have a massive, gigantic, huge game. You don't have a really short game. Um, but there's lots here to be able to get enjoy, and you will improve on repeated plays. What we found is basically after we played it the first time, we kind of sat back and thought, right, we know the game works now. Now we want to get good at the game. And then we played it two or three more times, and we played it with different family and friends and all the rest of it, and it works pretty well. Um, in terms of how as a family we feel about it, um, I like it, my wife likes it, our children generally get along quite well with it. It's a good game, it's quite popular. So, if you'd like to reach us and talk about more about this game or any other, you can find us, as always, at rogueartistcreations.com. On Facebook, you can find us at Rogue Artist Creations. Our Twitter handle is at Rogue A Creations, and you can reach me at GM First at rogueartistcreations.com. Um, thank you very much for basically staying and watching the video. Um, please like, please subscribe, please share, help us get the word out there. Let us know if there's more of anything that you want to see, more work placement, more strategy, more miniature. We'll do what we can to kind of help you. Um, and basically we're trying to make content that you find interesting. So from Waggle Dance, a fun little game, and from myself, thank you, and we'll see you next time.